Right. So as it turns out, the vast majority of people don't know what they're doing when it comes to audio processing. Not that they should, as it's a relatively complex process, especially if you've never done it before. The intent of this video is to simplify it and give video game commentators a crash course in how to edit their audio with a free program called Audacity. This does work for commentary of all types, because ultimately voice is voice, but I'm talking specifically to the gamers here. So the first thing you're going to need is Audacity itself. Audacity.sourceforge.net, or you can do a Google search for it, that's A-U-D-A-C-I-T-Y. The second thing you're going to need is a recorded audio track. Now, I've got one here, Audacity is loaded up and ready to go. I had just done a little bit of a test track, we'll play through it, and you'll see how it changes as we go. Audacity audio editing demonstration for gaming commentators. Be going over compression, normalize, and noise reduction. Right, so as I started out, basically the idea here is that you want to be recording without having your microphone set to the max possible recording input volume. The, the higher you go, the more volume you have input coming into the stream, the more distortion you're going to get, the worst audio you're going to get coming out of everything. So really what you want is you want everything at 12 o'clock if you can. 12 o'clock basically means that you've got all of your sliders right about the middle. Um, if you were to deal with dials on a, an editing board or anything like that, it would just be straight up 12 o'clock. It's just your basic mid-range stuff. Now, I'm only going to focus on the basics. This is how you're going to go from a track that sounds bad to one that's much cleaner and easier to work with. First function that you're going to need to become basically your best friend is called normalize. So you've got your track, control A to select all, or you can go edit and select all, same way. Effect, normalize. Now what normalize is doing is it's basically adjusting the volume of a particular track um, away from the, the center line, zero decibels is the way that they've got it set up. Um, it's not really a, an arbitrary sort of thing, but don't worry too much about that. So you want to normalize the zero decibels, and you're going to see right away we've got a lot more volume on the track. We've got higher peaks, both the positive and the negative. So we'll play through it again. Audacity audio editing demonstration for gaming commentators. We'll be going over compression, normalize, and noise reduction. All right, so the next step is going to be a compressor. Now, the point behind the compressor is basically that you want it to be reducing your peaks while leaving the low volume alone without touching it, basically. So as you can see in the audio track here, we've got some lower areas and some peaks. What we want to do is we want to bring those more in line with one another. The reason for this, and this has to do with some people that are maybe very loud at very particular parts of their video. So you're playing Slender or Amnesia, something like that, and something surprises you, you make an awful lot of noise really quickly, and it's very, very loud. If you don't compress the signal, you're always going to have that piece of your video that's very, very loud, because it was just, it was when you made the noise. Um, I find about here is the, the fair set of settings you want to be going with. Now, Obviously, you're going to be changing and tweaking these a little bit just to make sure what sounds best to you. So around minus 10 or 11 decibels for threshold, noise floor at around minus 40. I go with the highest ratio I possibly can. Attack time, 0.1 seconds. Decay time, 1 second. So if we go ahead and compress that, now you can see our peaks have leveled out a little bit. So our volume is more in line. Our, our low volume areas are closer to the high volume areas. You can still express a lot of intensity. So if you've made that crazy scream because the Slender Man caught up to you, that intensity is still there, but it doesn't have the ear piercing volume that comes along with it. Play through it one more time. Audacity audio editing demonstration for gaming commentators. We'll be going over compression, normalize, and noise reduction. All right. So the next thing, noise reduction. This one's fairly simple and unfortunately my track here that I have because I don't have a different microphone and I'm not in a very noisy room, you're not going to have a lot of background noise that you can hear on my track that I've got. However, there is noise everywhere, everywhere around you. If you've got, uh, you're doing your audio recording in a, in a basement, let's say for example, you're going to have the furnace going, you're going to have maybe a washer and dryer, washing machine dryer that's going and, and causing some noise or perhaps a fan or something like that. These are ambient noise sources and these can be removed in a large part from your audio track. So what you need to do is you need to isolate that audio. And the reason 
that you, or the, not the reason rather, the way that you're going to go about doing this, when you do your recording, record silence at the beginning, silence at the end, so that you've got something that's a reference point, okay? The idea here at the beginning, we've got some blank audio, there's nothing going on, no voice or anything like that, which means we have a pure signal for what the noise is that's in the background of the track. You select that first little bit, you go up to effects, noise removal, and you're going to get the noise profile. Okay, getting the noise profile basically loads what's in this selection here that we've just picked. That's what we want to remove from the track. Once you've got the noise profile, you're going to reselect everything, back up to effect, and to noise removal. And now you're going to play with some of these sliders a little bit. Okay, this is one of the areas where nobody can really give you any advice. You're going to have to play with them and see what comes out to sound the best. But it does give you a preview option as well. So if we go ahead and we take that, you'll see if you were looking very carefully that the beginning bit here has evened out. There were a couple of little peaks in there, here and there. And we'll go through and play it again. Audacity audio editing demonstration for gaming commentators. We'll be going over compression, normalize, and noise reduction. All right, so the next step, we'll throw in a little bit of EQ, equalization. This is another one that you get to play around with. So let's say I wanted my track to sound an awful lot more like I was on the radio. Uh, in Audacity itself, we've got just a basic AM radio kind of preset for the equalizer. You see it changed a couple of things in the audio, you play through that. Audacity audio editing demonstration for gaming commentators. We'll be going over compression, normalize, and noise reduction. And if you don't like it, edit, undo, and it goes back a step. These, all of these audio programs are pretty good at that. They, they keep kind of a track record of what you're doing. Very, very similar to something like Microsoft Word where you can undo a bunch of steps in a row. If on the other hand, let's say maybe you're a little bit young and on the male side of the gender spectrum, let's say your voice is perhaps a little bit on the trebly side. Well, you can give it a bass boost. Now, it's not going to make you sound like Sylvester Stallone or anything like that, but it does help in some cases. So we throw that in there, give it another play. Audacity audio editing demonstration for gaming commentators. We'll be going over compression, normalize, and noise reduction. So now in my case, this isn't something that really helps because I have a, ver a fairly deep voice to begin with. So doing a bass boost obviously isn't of much use. At the end of all of these things, I just undid that EQ, at the end of doing all of these things, compressing, a little bit of noise reduction, you are going to reduce your peaks back down again. Okay, so this is the basic volume of your track. It's a little bit lower than it would otherwise have been. So I recommend, because this is what I do, at the end of every track, once I've done my editing, I normalize it to zero decibels one more time. So it brings everything back into good volume, nice set, standard, awesome. And what you will find if you're normalizing everything at the end, you always have that last bit of normalize done, you're going to find that your volume is basically perfect for YouTube. Uh, any other source that you're going to use, as long as people have their speakers set 12 o'clock, right? So in Windows, they've got their slider set at the mid-range, you know, 100 level, whatever it's called. I can't remember how they've got it set up. Uh, they've got their speakers set at the middle or their headphones, whatever it is, you're not going to blast out their eardrums. You're not going to make it so they have to turn up their volume. This is the right level to use and everybody should be using it. So a little bit of a talk about microphones. Obviously, when you're talking about something like the gaming networks that are out there, you're going to want to be using a condenser mic for your recording. Condenser mics are designed more for this type of, of, uh, of medium podcasting, interviews, that sort of thing. That's what, these, that's what these microphones are for. Dynamic microphone, this is more of your concert mics. You see some people that are using a Shure SM58 microphone. This is sort of the concert standard that you'll see on stage for many of your favorite bands. The microphone I'm using is called an Apex 415. It's something that I've never seen outside of Canada. So here's a picture of it just so you can see what it is. And basically any microphone that you're going to get that looks like this Pretty well, you're going to find them in about the $100 US range. $100 about, what, 60 to 70 pounds uh, if you're going with the UK side. Another couple of options that you can go with for microphones, Audio-Technica AT2020, the Blue Yeti, or the Snowball. They're all in about the same range. 
If, on the other hand, money is absolutely of no object whatsoever, then the cream of the crop, what I would suggest you go with, and this is where I'll be getting at some point, haven't picked it up yet because it's expensive, is the Shure SM7B. It's used professionally in radio stations, you can't really argue with that, and they used it on the Michael Jackson Thriller album. That's really all that I have to say about it. For everybody that has a poor microphone, perhaps, you got to remember that the microphone is only one piece of the puzzle. Knowing how to use it is another thing that is just as important. And the only other suggestion that I can really make is when you have a microphone, you don't want to be talking into it. Everybody thinks that a pop filter is magic, that it, it, it removes the, the pop sounds from the P, F, S, all of that sort of, th those sort of uh, consonant sounds. What you want to do is you want to be talking past your microphone. Talk over it or beside it or something like that. Don't put it right in front of your mouth. Put it down a couple inches to the right or the left a couple inches or up. And usually with a condenser microphone, the closer you are, the more bassy, the more powerful sound you're going to have out of it. I usually have mine sitting in front of me about six inches. That's all I have to say. Tarmac out.